Children's Church this morning. song service and all the great things just kind of gave validation and confirmation for the word of God that is placed on our heart. But if you look at bookshelves, maybe some of you have them on yours, uh, they're full of books that talk about being left behind. Uh, the rapture. You think that with all the books that have recently been written and uh, uh, that, that are available, that the world would know about the rapture. And you think that the church would certainly know about the rapture. And uh, that they would be ready to know that soon uh, the coming of the Lord is at hand. Uh, I think about this. I want to look at some questions this morning. And even though most of you probably know, but I want to say, just in case there's some who don't know, that the word rapture is not found in the Bible, but it is a principle that is found in the Bible where the Lord talks of a great catching away. Now, you may say, Brother Seville, have we added something to the Bible? No, we're, we're giving a name to something that is a doctrine of the Bible. You know the word Bible is not found in the Bible. And we look at the Trinity throughout the Word of God, uh, the validation that God's Word gives us, the Old Testament and the New Testament, validation of the Trinity. But the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And so we want to look at uh, the rapture this morning. If you want to refer to it as the great catching away, that's, that's all right too. The rapture, the catching away, uh, I, I want to look at some questions as we think about the rapture of the church. Uh, I want to ask you this. The first question I want to look at this morning is, is the rapture real? Is the rapture real? Would you, would you think with me and imagine with me for just a few moments, can you imagine a young mother pushing her cart uh, in Walmart uh, and, and the rapture is soon to take place? So a young mother pushing her cart as she walks through Walmart. Can you imagine a delivery truck driving down 209? The rapture is about to happen. How about a surgeon in Harrisburg Hospital, Pentacle Health? Can I give them a plug this morning as they're getting ready to do surgery uh, and the rapture is about to take place? And what about a Filipino pilot as he is flying an aircraft as the rapture is about to take place? How about a, a, a European archaeologist as he's digging in one of the graves uh, of the catacombs? Imagine all these scenarios as they're about to happen before the coming of the Lord and then the rapture takes place. Can you imagine in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, can you imagine the atmosphere as it crackles and ripples and as it echoes and it reverberates as the coming of the Lord happens? I'm not just talking about thunder that's happening in Upper Dolphin County. I'm talking about the coming of the Lord that is greater than any vault of, uh, of lightning, 
not something that's happening on a, on a local scale, but I'm talking about a worldwide scale. As the air reverberates, amen, as the thunder cracks in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, as quick as you can blink your eye, even quicker is the coming of the Lord. Amen for the saints of God, the rapture. We'll talk more about the second coming in a moment. Don't get the second coming mixed up with the rapture. Jesus is coming back again, but that is not the rapture. He's first coming back for the saints of God. We'll meet him in the air, the great catching away. He says all these things happen. Can you imagine at Walmart the rapture has happened? Somewhere a shopping cart just begins to go down the aisle. And it bumps into the counter as it stops because no longer is there someone pushing it. Can you imagine that somewhere along Route 209, there's a new delivery truck and it begins to decelerate because there's no longer a foot on the gas pedal. It begins to veer off to the side of the road and maybe crashes somewhere because no longer is there a driver there. He's been caught away, amen, in the rapture. Would you imagine that somewhere in Harrisburg Hospital that a scapula falls down and it, it, it hits a star barrier because there's no longer surgeon holding that blade. Can you imagine that Filipino pilot and as his co-pilot looks over and the pilot is gone, he has to take over the controls. Can you imagine that archaeologist in the catacombs as he's been digging up bones of those who love Jesus and now all of a sudden some bones come together and they come through rock and they come through dirt and they're gone because Jesus has caught that soul away. I'm talking about the coming of the Lord. Amen. Is it for real? You may say, oh, Brother Seville, come on now. Pastor, I want to tell you, uh, how comes it is that folks will listen to Stephen Hawkins when he, uh, that scientist, he says that the world won't be around for, for more than a thousand years. No one laughs at him. Yes. But they laugh when they scorn. Sometimes Christians are hesitant to talk about the rapture of God. But I need to tell you that He came once and He will come again. Jesus' return is imminent. It is real. Believe it. Bank on it. And rest in it. Because Jesus is coming again. The second question I want to ask you is this. Is the rapture something new? Well, I think that we need to look at a few things. When I answer that question from the Word of God, is the rapture something new? Was it something new that Paul had given us as he wrote to the Thessalonica church? <coughs> that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, amen, the trouble of God is going to sound, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the clouds to ever be with the Lord. Amen. This is Jesus coming back from the church. He's not coming back, amen, to rage war on the earth. He's not coming back to set up His kingdom. He's coming to take the church away, the rapture, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. As you sat here this morning in this church service, your eyes have blinked numerous times. It's how God's designed it to keep your eyes clean and clear. Uh, and we don't even think about it, but even quicker than a blink of an eye is how quick Jesus is coming. So is it something new? Our text says this, In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. It's going to be a big place. It's going to be a large place, more than our mind can even imagine. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I, I, I go away to prepare a place for you. Amen. Jesus is personally attending to a place where the saints of God will live eternally. That's what he's doing this morning. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. This is the first mention of the rapture. Then Paul mentions it again in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18. Amen. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Praise God. Thank God that the resurrection, amen, is validated by Jesus Christ Himself and the rapture is given to us. 
as we look at the Old Testament, you'll find that, that, that uh, many of the Jews, they believed that, that they would be destroyed, but one day they would rise again. The oldest book written in the Bible, even though Genesis comes first, but chronologically written would be the book of Job. And we find that Job said this to us. He said, Sister Dietrich, I know that my body is going to be destroyed by worms. He said, but one day my body is going to be put back together again. I know that my Redeemer lives. And one day, he said, I'm going to be with my Redeemer. Hallelujah. He looked for the resurrection. Amen. And Brother Wall, the Jews, they didn't believe that... Uh, in cremation. Now I'm not going to get into a theological debate. I believe God can bring anybody back from anything. But the Jews, Brother Josh, they wouldn't cremate, but they would gather the bones of their loved ones together and they would bury them all in one place because they knew about the resurrection. That one day this body will be resurrected again. Listen. All around cemeteries, probably in almost every cemetery, that you and I can even imagine. It's been said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, as the last, uh, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is it mysterious? Yes. Is it new? No. Listen, even from the very beginning of the church, Clement said this, in AD 96, let us every hour expect the kingdom of God. We know not the day. We know not the day. The belief in the rapture is nothing new. Amen. But the problem is that a few hundred years after God had sent His only begotten Son, the message of Jesus Christ was being publicized Somewhere, Sister Beatrice, the church forgot about the rapture. Somewhere in becoming lukewarm and allowing the world to slip in, allowing to think that the gain of worldly things was so important, we forgot about the rapture of the church. But I'm here to remind you that we are closer now than we've ever been to the rapture of the church. Some may think, well, 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 my daddy, he loves God, so I'll just grab hold of him and I'll make it when the rapture of the church is. Listen, my friend, the rapture of the church is so quick that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, our loved ones will be out of here and God wants each of you to be out of here. That's why it's behooving to live each and every moment ready for the rapture, ready for the return of Jesus Christ to the church. So many people, they think, well, I have time. When I die on my deathbed, I'll make it right. In the process of age, I'll make it right. You may not have that opportunity because the coming of the Lord is close. So we know that it's nothing new, but from the Old Testament, and Jesus gave validation in the New Testament. Paul gives us greater understanding of it. Let me ask you this question. Will there be any warning? No, there will not be any warning. We can see some things line up, and there's some things that we know. We know this, that the Word of God, and I won't turn there this morning, but in Luke 21, verse number 25, it tells us about things in the sky and stars and planets. Amen. They're watching them all the time, and amazing things are happening. You know what's happening up there? Jesus says, I'm coming back again. I know for those who study the stars and those who are scientific in and, and more ways than what I am, they may say, well, that star over Bethlehem that led the wise men to Jesus, it was just the aligning of the planets. And it just happened to be coincidence. Don't think what's happening in the heavenlies is coincidence. It's all a sign that Jesus is coming again. I want you to know that when we see worship in the temple, when we see that globally folks are, are rejecting the nation of Israel, and you can know that Jesus is coming again. We look at the news and we see it. The rapture is going to happen soon. Let's answer the question this morning. Well, how fast will that rapture happen? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
Rapture means this, a quick snatching away. <laughs> this is funny. I'll share a little funny story with you. Now, we have one little girl that seems to be struggling with shoes. We can never find shoes to walk on her feet. So Brother Josh, we decided that we needed to go and find her some shoes. So we're letting her try on whatever she wants because Sister Terry going to the park in sandals is all the park time long. Sister Tina, shoe, stuff that my shoe. And we spend the whole time pulling things out of her shoe. So we gotta get rid of those sandals and find some shoes. So went to the store, found some shoes, Sister Jenny. And uh, so a lot's going on, you know, trying to keep up with the little ones at the counter. And Sister Dietrich, I let her wear the shoes all the way through the store because I didn't want to buy shoes if she wasn't going to wear them. So she had them candy on her feet, and I had to take it off to give it to the cashier to, to check it out, just one of them. And so I was trying to put the rest of the stuff up on the counter, Sister Tina, and she had the shoe in the middle of it. And all of a sudden, I thought I saw, and my eye heard drop it. And I thought I saw a little kid, Brother Dennis, pick that shoe up and take off right away. But so much was happening, I didn't know if I was just going crazy. You know what I mean? I didn't know if I was just going crazy. You can call me crazy. Uh, but but I, I, I said to my I, I said to the guy, did you give me the shoe back? Uh, so I said to my wife, is it here? I'm looking everywhere for it. I'm probably looking like a crazy person. But I just bought these shoes, and I want to at least get home with them before we lose them. And so uh, we're looking everywhere. I thought, what happened? And she's going, shoe, shoe, shoe. And I'm looking for it. And you know, lo and behold, here comes someone from the front of the store by the door. And guess what? faster than that is going to be the return of the Lord. Yeah. You know, I felt like I was going crazy, Brother Josh. Like, I know the shoe was just here. I thought I'd just seen a little kid pick it up and take off with it. I, you know, everything was happening. But, but, but can you imagine what's going to be like uh, when the rapture takes place? Well, where's my dad? Where's my mom? Where's my baby? Where's grandma? Where's the pilot? Uh, where, where, where are they at? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it's going to be fast. There's not going to be time for repentance. There's not going to be grab the time to grab on to, to grandma or grandpa's leg and take a journey to the, to the sky with it. You've got to be ready. It's fast. How fast is it? It's this fast. Look at these men and women in the Bible that Enoch, the Word of God, says that he walked with God. Enoch walked with God. And he was not for God took him. What happened to Enoch? No one saw. No one knew. All of a sudden, he just went home. Amen. You look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 6. The king Uzziah died. And all of a sudden, something happens. He's in the presence of God. You look at Philip, this world, this, this citywide revival. And God pulls him for one man. Amen. And it was fast. Paul said he was caught up into the heavens. Think about John on the Isle of Patmos. Brother Dennis, he's there all of a sudden. He's being punished, Sister Tina. And all of a sudden, he's caught up in the heavens with God. That's how fast the rapture happens. Let me ask this question to you. I know the time. I'm trying to hurry. Let me see what's going on happens if I miss the rapture. Well, let me say this to you. I'm going to give you all the positives right now. But because you can love Jesus right now and do His will, you can obey the gospel. God is giving you a preacher to preach to you. God is giving the Spirit of God to help you in your life. God is giving you the Word of God. God is giving you every tool that He can do to encourage you in a positive way so that you can make the rapture. But if you miss the rapture, I need to tell you that for those who will be saved from the rapture, after the rapture, during a time of tribulation, it will be very, very hard to be saved. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's very, very hard. Because number one, you can't worship the beast that everybody else is going to worship. Number two, everything that you need to live economically, you can't take the mark of the beast and be saved. 
And number three, if you can't live for Jesus while you're alive and not facing death, you probably will not live during the, the, the tribulation period and serve God. You'll have to give your life for God. And if you can't give your life for God in living, will you be able to live your life for God and die? They have to be ready for the return of the Lord. <laughs> Sister Holly, if you come to the this morning, I see the time. Listen, it would do you a great injustice if I did not preach messages about heaven and hell. Things that are encouraging to you, but also things that are challenging to you, like you need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Can people lose out with God who once started right with God? Absolutely. Because somewhere in the middle of life, they get their eyes off of God and they get it on to other things. May I ask you where your eyes are this morning? Are they fixed on Jesus? Or if God came back? Would you be ready to meet him in the air? I'm not talking to folks that you may get diagnosed with a disease and be able to get right with God. I'm talking to folks that I believe that in our generation, the Lord is coming back and we need to live like he's coming back. That means that the priority of our life is serving and loving God more than anything else. Are you Ready. Are you ready? The rapture is nothing new. Jesus told us about it. Paul told us about it. How quick is it going to happen? In a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. Are you ready? If you're not, this morning there's an altar to get ready. It's going to happen. I'm not asking for a show of hands this morning. I'm asking you to look. Look at yourself and examine yourself. If the trumpet were to blow and this old world were to shake with thunder at the coming of the Lord and God called the dead in Christ out of their grave and then He began to call everyone who lives, who has the blood of Jesus Christ applied to their life, and is ready, would you go this morning? Or would you be disillusioned and left behind? This morning, you have time. It's behooving to make sure that you are ready for the coming of the Lord. The church has got to preach the coming of Jesus. The rapture. It's not something that's old and forgotten. It's not something that's outdated. It's not something that's been proven wrong. But it's something that's going to happen soon. Are you ready? Now that you've examined yourself, would you come around on the altar and would you seal the confidence of being ready in prayer in the presence of God? Would you gather in, in a place of prayer this morning? Amen. As we make sure our hearts are ready for the rapture. Of the church. Let's get her. Thank you. 